First, I'd like to, to recall what marginal product is. To get marginal product graphically, we drew a total product curve. So, for example, water holding fertilizer fixed on one axis, quantity on another axis, draw either a type 1 or type 2 shape. That's a type 2 shape, so that's a total product curve. Total product of water. And then to get to get marginal product, we take a tangent line. Next, recall what the rate of technical substitution is. Rate of technical substitution is minus the slope of an isoquant. In other words, if you graph W and F and you have an isoquant, then whatever the s slope of that isoquant is here or here, that's negative 1 times the rate of technical substitution. And you'll recall that we abbreviate rate of technical substitution RTS. RTS does not mean returns to scale. It never means returns to scale. Not in not in this class. The purpose of this lesson is to draw a connection between marginal product and returns to scale. Now uh, I'm sorry, between marginal product and rate of technical substitution. Now it would appear at first glance that there's no connection between these. If you wanted to graph marginal product on the on the bottom graph, here's at least the way to think about it. Imagine the bottom graph has a q-axis, which is coming out of the screen. And so you have a three-dimensional object. To get marginal product, you'd need to find the total product curve. Well, the total product curve, as we've seen before, is obtained by going in this direction, so for example holding fertilizer fixed and going then to in the direction of the arrow and looking how the graph changes uh, vertically, that is uh, how, how Q is changing. So what's changing is the dimension that you can't draw on the screen, it's the dimension that's coming out of the screen, <coughs> on top of the screen. And marginal product is the question of if you increase water, let's say by one gallon from here to here, then how much does Q change? So how much do you go up in the vertical direction that's up, that's coming out of the screen? So that's what marginal product is, whereas rate of technical substitution is the slope of the isoquant, as I've seen. So it seems like th there's uh, no connection between marginal product and rate of technical substitution. In fact, that they are occurring in different geometrical planes of this three-dimensional object, and so there's no relationship between the two of them. It turns out that actually there is a relationship between the two of them, and so that's the purpose of this lesson. So to get started, draw another WF plane, isoquant. And suppose I've got a point A on the isoquant, draw a vertical line down to a point B, and then a horizontal line to a point C. The change in quantity as you move from A to C is zero because both A and C are on the same isoquant. I claim that the change in quantity as you move from A to C is also equal to the change in quantity as you move from A to B plus the change in quantity as you move from B to C. In other words, going from A to C gets you a, this same change in quantity regardless of whether you go from A to C directly or whether you go first from A to B and then from B to C. It doesn't matter how you get from A to C. The path doesn't matter. It's, it's path independent. All that matters is the initial point 
and the final point. Now since the first equation was delta q as you go from a to c equals 0, and the second equation is also delta q as you go from a to c, then we can set the second equation also equal to 0. But what I want to work on is the right-hand side. Let me write delta q as you go from a to b divided by delta f times delta f. I'll work on the second term later. Now you can see that by dividing by delta f and multiplying by delta f I haven't changed anything. But the reason I did it is that the motion from A to B, if you look on the lower left-hand graph, is the motion holding W fixed. And so the fraction, delta Q over A to B over delta F, is holding W fixed. I'll do a similar term for the second term. Now the second term is the motion from B to C. With B to C, you can see on the lower left, you're holding F fixed. So I'll take delta Q from B to C, divide by delta W times delta W. That doesn't change it, but the motion from B to C is holding F fixed, so this is done holding F fixed. Next, I recognize that this part of the equation. Change in quantity as you move from A to B divided by delta F holding W fixed is the definition of the marginal product of fertilizer. It's how much output increases when you increase fertilizer holding water fixed. Similarly, this is the marginal product of water. Okay, and because uh, because this is equal to this, which is equal to this, which is equal to this, I can set this equal to zero. Now, the purpose of this lesson was to connect marginal products on the one hand with rate of technical substitution on the other hand. So we've been working a whole lot on marginal products. Let's work a bit on rate of technical substitution. Now the rate of technical substitution is minus the slope of an isoquant. In a graph like this, well, we can write it as the following. The rate of technical substitution is minus the slope of an isoquant. And the slope of an isoquant is rise over run. And rise is delta F in this graph, run is delta W. So that's the rate of technical substitution, minus the rise over run. What we need to do is to try to connect the rate of technical substitution with the marginal product. So I'm going to go back to here now, and I'm going to try to manipulate this so that I can recognize the rate of technical substitution in that equation. So let's subtract the first term from both sides. So I'd get MPW delta W equals minus MPF delta F. I want to divide both sides by delta W. and now divide both sides by MPF. So I get the marginal product of water divided by the marginal product of fertilizer equals minus delta F over delta W. Now you can see why I did that. Because what I have, minus delta F over delta W, is just this. Minus delta F over delta W. And that 
is the rate of technical substitution. In this case, it's rate of technical substitution of water for fertilizer. And so I've proven a general result, which I'm going to write up on the upper right. The general result is that the rate of technical substitution sorry about that that the rate of technical substitution of water for fertilizer is equal to the marginal product of water divided by the marginal product of fertilizer you could it turns out also conclude that the rate of technical substitution of fertilizer for water so you're flipping the F and the W is the marginal product of fertilizer divided by the marginal product of water. So in other words, if you flip F and W on the left, you have to flip F and W on the right. So this equation connects rate of technical substitution with marginal product in a way that wasn't at all obvious when we started, because as we said, the marginal products and the rate of technical substitutions are in, in different planes. Um, indeed, going up, going back to the diagram we worked on in the beginning, I, I talked about the distance from here to here as being related to the marginal product of water. Okay, so the, the marginal product of water is the the vertical distance, and by vertical I mean above the screen. It's the vertical distance that's the change in Q divided by the change in W. The marginal product of fertilizer, which is the other thing we're talking about, is is related to something like this. It's if you increase fertilizer by a certain amount from, from here to here, then how much does Q go up? So, so the marginal product of water is acting in one plane, the marginal product of fertilizer is acting in another plane, and the rate of the technical substitution is acting in yet another plane. So the geometry is really complicated and that's what makes it uh, somewhat surprising that we can get this kind of simple relationship between the rate of technical substitution and the marginal products.